now let's switch gears and talk about subtracting whole numbers. Addition was a process of putting things together. Subtraction is a process of taking away. For example, I have $5 in my pocket and I want to pay for a movie, $3. This is the cheap movies that show you the reruns, of course, these days. And so my question is, how much do I have left for snacks, $2? And it's hard to get snacks for $2. Anyway, but this illustrates the process of subtraction. And it's the process of taking away or finding a difference. So I have four things here. And if I take two away, I have two. And the way we'd express this mathematically is 4 minus the dash is a minus sign. 2 is equal to 2. So addition is the process of finding totals. Subtraction is the process of taking something away or finding a difference. Now, so we start with a 5. We take away the 3. And that leaves us with 2. And the symbol for that is the minus sign, which is a dash. So we can say that subtraction is the inverse property to addition. So if I have 5 is 3 plus 2, then I can say that 5 is 3 plus what? Or the inverse, 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. So if addition is 5 is equal to 3 plus 2, then 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. Let's look at another example. So if we have 5 minus 3 is equal to 2, then the inverse is 3 plus 2 is 5. If I have 6 minus 2 is 4, the inverse is 2 plus 4 is 6. And if I have x minus y is equal to z, then the inverse is y plus z is equal to x. Now, Let's look at another subtraction example that's similar to the addition ones. So we line them up, and then instead of adding them, we subtract them. So in this case, 7 minus 1 is 6, 5 minus 2 is 3, and 3 minus 1 is 2. Pretty straightforward. And again, just like you did with addition, you do it column by column by column. However, you may run into an interesting case, and I'd like to show you another video involving more of my family members that illustrate this case, and then we'll talk about it. Can I help you, sir? Yeah, I need to pay my fees. They gave me this. Yes, that says you owe $327. Uh, for your Math 86 class and your Ultimate Frisbee class. Let's see, 100, 200, 300, 10, 20, and here are seven ones. That looks correct. Ultimate Frisbee? Wait a minute, I didn't take that. I wanted motorcycle stunt riding. You know, we don't offer a class in motorcycle daredevil stunts. Then I want my money back for the Ultimate Frisbee class. Uh, let's see, $169 for the Ultimate Frisbee. Give me my money back. I'm sorry, sir. I can't do that. What do you mean you can't do that? Look, I, I have to give you nine ones back. There are only seven there. How can I take nine away from seven? I can't do it. I can't give you your money back. Look, it's easy. Give me ten ones for this ten, and I'll show you. I'm sorry. I still can't give you the change. What now? Well, look, I've got to give you six tens, and there's only two on the table. OK, look. Give me 10 tens for this 100, and I'll show you what we can do. OK, here you are. Oh, OK, now I can do it. 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And the amount that's left is exactly correct. Here's your change, sir. Gee, how'd you learn to do that? Duh, maybe you're the one who should be taking Math 86. This leads us to a process called borrowing. Let's take a look at the slide and I'll show you what I mean. Suppose we have 4,623 minus 
3,786. Well, suppose I try to subtract a 6 from a 3. I can't do it because 3 is less than 6. What should I do? What is that process? Here are some more examples. In each of these cases, you can look and see that in some of the columns, there are numbers that are actually less than the thing you're trying to subtract. So we need to take a larger number from a smaller one, and we have to find a procedure. So the question is, how can we do it? Let's look at this case, 4,823 minus 2,714. Let me write that in expanded form, and then let's play some games. So first of all, I look at the units column. I have plus 3 minus 4. Right away, that's going to be hard to do. So let me borrow 10 from the tens and put that into the units column. So I'm left with 110 and now 13 ones. Not a good number, but now I can do the math. So now I have 4,800, 110, and 13 minus all of those things. So I can do that, but now because I have 13 minus 4, I can do the math. So what I did was borrowed a 10 from the tens column and added that to what was in the units column so I could do the math. This process is called borrowing. Let's look at another example. Here we go, 9 minus 7, that's easy too, but 4 minus 5, uh-oh. Now we're going to have a problem. So what I need to do is borrow one from that hundreds. And if I borrow one from the hundreds, the hundreds goes down by one, but now I have 14 minus 5, that's 9. But now over in that hundreds column, I have 0 minus 7, a problem. So now let me borrow one from the thousands column, so I have 10 minus 7, now I can do that. So I have 6 minus 6 is 0, 6 minus 2 is 4, and I was able to do this problem. Now you can always check your subtraction by taking the result, adding it to the number you've subtracted, and you should get the number that you're subtracting from. So I have uh, 26,757, add the result, 40,392, and notice I get the same thing. So you can always check a subtraction because it's inverse process, an inverse process by adding. Let's look at how we might use subtraction in word problems. For example, if Ann has $456 and repays a $234 loan, we'd like to know how much she has left. So let's, first of all, hunt the information up in the paragraph and then summarize it down at the bottom. We have a total of $456 to start. She repays $234, and we want to know how much is left. So we put how much she has to start with on top, how much she's paying below that, and subtract it. So 6 minus 4 is 2, 5 minus 3 is 2, and 4 minus 2 is 2, and of course it's dollars, so she has $222 left. Now, of course, it's always good to check by adding. So we take the result and add it to what we've subtracted to see if we get what we started with. And in this case, we see it checks out. So we've probably done the problem correctly. Thank you.